What is up guys, today I'm going to be doing a tutorial on how to create a basic calculator using Python standard TK inner GUI package. So the first thing that we need to do is obviously import TK inner. So from tinker import star. Next, what we're going to do is create a tinker window. So calculator equals to TK. Um, to specify the title, we can say calculator.title calculator. And in order to make it non-resizable, uh, all we have to say is calculator dot resizable zero zero and what this does is it prevents the calculator from being resized uh, by the user both horizontally and vertically so in order to display it uh, all we have to say is calculator dot main loop so calculator dot main loop and if we run it we can clearly see that we have a non resizable TK in a window so the next thing that we need to do is write uh, the class for this application. So inside here, uh, we're going to say class application frame. Now in the initialization of this class, we're going to say init self master. Master is the parent widget and args and quarks. Uh, typically I include this in all of my Python classes so I can input keywords and arguments however I would like. So in here we're going to initialize the frame with what we passed into the class so frame dot init self master args and quarks now in order to uh, make this class function properly uh, to display uh, this tinker window we're going to say app equals to application calculator dot grid and we're going to use the grid geometry manager uh, uh, for this calculator so if we launch it you can clearly see that uh, we don't really have much we just sort of have uh, this uh, let me pull this up we really don't have sorry um, we really don't have anything we just sort of have uh, this small window uh, with nothing in it that's because we haven't added any widgets to it yet so I'm gonna create a function uh, called define create widgets uh, self and that's gonna pretty much be responsible for creating all uh, the widgets the buttons the entries uh, everything of that sort so first off obviously we have to call this function so self dot create widgets and inside this widget uh, we're going to uh, create an entry now this entry is going to act as uh, the calculators display showing all of the expressions that the user has entered. So self.display equals to entry self font equals to Helvetica 16 um, relief equals to raised justify uh, equals to right. Um, so obviously what we do here is we create an entry. Um, uh, we set the font family and the font weight uh, and uh, we add a couple of these options for the styling. Uh, the relief um, determines pretty much how uh, the entry looks whether it is raised whether it is groove whether it is flat uh, personally I've experimented with this and I like raised so I'm sticking it with that but you can sort of choose anything you want from the documentation so justify equals to right that's gonna do what you think it does it's gonna align the text to the right now obviously uh, for a calculator the default text is simply just zero so self dot display dot insert now this takes in two parameters the first parameter is the position, so it's going to be at the first position, so 0, and it's going to have the default text, which is 0. So the last thing that we have to do is obviously display this. So inside here, I'm going to say self.display.grid row equals to 0, column equals to 0. And if we launch this, we can clearly see that we have a calculator with a display like this. So we can type stuff in it, just like that. So what we're gonna do next is create the first row. Now, the first row, it has buttons uh, seven, eight, nine times and clear. So in here, self dot uh, seven button equals to button, self font equals to Helvetica, 11 text equals to seven, and we're going to bind commands to these buttons later. But first we need to finish the GUI. So self.7button.grid 
Now, because uh, the entry widget it occupies the first row, we're gonna have to shift uh, the seven button down to the second row or row equals to one. So, row equals to one, column equals to zero because it's the first button in the row. And I'll talk about stickies in a second. But if we launch this again, we can clearly see that we have a entry uh, widget and a button uh, below. So. All I'm gonna do is copy this and uh, apply that same uh, methodology for both the A button, the 9 button, the times button, and the clear button. So 8, uh, 9 times clear. So over here, 8 button, and copy this, uh, 9 button. Times button and clear button. So uh, the second thing that we're going to do is change the text so of these buttons. So for here, text would be eight. For here, text would be nine. For here, uh, text would be times. And for here. Uh, because it's the clear button, the text would be C. Um, and for the columns, we're going to keep the row because all of these all of these buttons are in one row. But we're going to increase the column count for each of these uh, buttons by one. So uh, column equals to three and column equals to four. Now, if we launch this, we can see that the calculator looks a little bit weird. Um, first off, uh, the seven button occupies the entire width of this entry, and the entry is supposed to occupy the entire width of this calculator in the first place. So how do we fix that? Well, in order to make sure that this entry uh, occupies the entire width of all these um, buttons combined, uh, we're going to have to specify an option called column span. Now what this does is it dictates uh, how many columns a widget will occupy. So column span, if we say column span equals to 5, then you can clearly see that obviously if we have a calculator here, uh, this entry widget is going to occupy five columns or five buttons. Um, and this looks fine. However, you will see that the buttons, uh, they don't occupy the full width of the column. So in order to fix this, we're going to use the sticky uh, property that I talked about earlier. And this sticky property takes in uh, any number of directions. So these directions are northwest, northeast, southwest, southeast. Um, so if we uh, apply all of these directions here, so northwest, uh, northeast, southwest, southeast, it's going to make the button expand in all of the directions that it can, uh, which is what we want because we want to, it to occupy uh, the entire width and height of the column. So I'm just going to copy this same property and apply it for all of these buttons. And if we launch it, we can see that we have a calculator, uh, obviously with a uh, entry uh, and uh, all the buttons properly aligned. Now, the last thing that I'm going to do is set a border width uh, for these buttons. So for here, um, border width equals to one. Uh, for here, border width equals to one. Um, for here, border width equals to one. And for here, border width equals to one. And finally for here, border width equals to one. So if we launch this, we can see that again we have uh, uh, the calculator, um, except it looks, in my opinion, a little bit nicer. So um, before we move on, uh, we are going to copy all of this and apply pretty much the same thing for the next row. So for the second row, we have buttons four, five, six, uh, the divide button and the percentage button. So I'm just going to copy that for the second row, and really uh, you can copy that for the third row and the fourth row also. So for the second row, um, for the second row, we have buttons four. So uh, obviously rename the variable, so four button. We have uh, the five button. 
we have the six button we have the divide button and finally we have the percentage button now in order to display this it's really going to be the exact same thing However, uh, we remember we have to shift the call uh, the row count down by one. Uh, the columns are still going to stay the same. We still have five buttons in a row. However, uh, because we've already finished uh, the first row of buttons, we're going to have to shift uh, all of these buttons down by one row. So instead, instead of row equals to one, uh, we're going to do row equals to two now. So for all the buttons, replace row equals to one with row equals to two. And that should work. Um, the final thing that we're going to do for the second row is replace the text. So 7, we're going to replace that with uh, 4, replace that with 5, replace that with 6, um, replace that with divide, and replace this with percentage. Alright, so we have the first and the second rows done. Next thing that we're going to do is the third row, and on the third row we have uh, buttons 1, 2, 3, the minus button as well as the equals button. Now the equals button is a little bit special so I'll talk about that in a moment. So for one button, uh, obviously like what we did for the above rows, we're going to have to rename the variables. So one button, whoops, uh, two button, Uh, three button, uh, minus button, and uh, finally is one, two, three, four, yeah, equals button. So uh, change the row to three now since we've already finished the second row um, and uh, the equals button is a little bit special because the equals button is going to occupy two rows so just like what we did with the column span option which dictates how many columns a widget can occupy uh, the row span option dictates how many rows uh, a widget should occupy so row span equals to two so uh, if we have row span equals to two done, now all we have to do is change the text. So one, two, uh, I'm gonna replace that with three here. Uh, I'm gonna replace that with minus, and I'm gonna replace this with equals. So we're almost done with the GUI. Uh, all we have to do is the last row now. So um, I'm gonna rename the variables, and on the fourth row, uh, we only have four buttons because remember the equals button on the third row uh, occupies um, uh, two rows so therefore we're not going to have the five rows uh, sorry the five buttons uh, for this row and also uh, we're not going to have actually we're only going to have three buttons because the zero button is going to occupy two columns so uh, zero button Uh, dot button and plus button so first thing that we need to do is change the row count since we've already finished the third row uh, this has to be in row 4 so uh, row equals to four for all three buttons. Um, now, as you can see here, uh, we have columns zero, one, and two. However, like I said before, the zero button is going to occupy two columns. So we have to specify a column span. So this is going to occupy two columns. And um, because this is uh, because this button occupies two columns, uh, this column uh, for the dot button is going to be two. Um, and for the plus button, it's going to uh, be column three. So uh, now we're almost done. Uh, all we have to do is change the text. So zero, 
dot and plus. So we'll see how that launches. And there you go. So we have a, a pretty uh, sweet and neat calculator. So um, pretty much we're done with the GUI. Um, I'm just gonna go to the entry widget and see what happens if we apply a different uh, relief property, for example, flat. Mm. What if we replied, uh, what if we had no relief, so. Yeah, I still think that relief equals to uh, raised is the best. So, yeah, that's it for uh, this part. Um, so we finished the GUI of this calculator. In the next part, uh, we're going to um, add the functionality of the calculator. So allow the calculator to accept uh, user input, um, calculate the expression, uh, as well as validate the expression. So. In the second part, we're going to finish pretty much the entire calculator. Alright, thank you guys for watching. Um, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and I'll see you guys in the next one.